But we knew it was Griselda Blanco, her group. We had gotten the name of Riverita, but nothing concrete, you know, no picture to say, okay, this is who you're looking for. Nothing like that. I can't think of any other case where there was a child killed. Little Johnny Castro shot just because he happened to be sitting next to his father, who was Colombian and a target of some of the cocaine cowboys. I was a rookie homicide detective, only been up there less than a year. And my son was about the same age at that time. Uh, people always ask me, you know, have bodies ever bothered you? And never, other than this one case. I mean, that really hit me, you know, real hard. Because I had, I had kids that age, and it was an innocent baby, you know. I said, she says, well, fuck it, you know, at least we got him. I mean, she wasn't sorry about it, you know, she's like, like she didn't give a shit. Even though the Colombians were wild in the way they did things, she would just do it even in a stupid way. But well, they bother a lot of people, uh, not just here in the United States, they bother people in Colombia. Everybody would tell them this woman's out of control and she's gonna ruin everybody's business. He came back from those shores, word to her that let's just get whoever's involved and let's try to avoid killing innocent people. And the only thing that I remember the Colombians wanted of her was really to stay out of Miami as much as possible. So she got a lot of hate from down there, but she says, you know what, fuck them all. I do what I want up here. If they don't like it, they could come after me too. Flat out, you know. I would hear conversations in Spanish with Rafa because I was sitting in his house. That motherfucking girl again, she did this to me. Now what am I gonna do? And I know he'd call down there and he'd ask the guys down there, what do you want me to do? And somehow this girl got a pass every time because she should have been dead a long time before her time, a long time. Back to work. Riverita, he became Griselda's most favored enforcer. So I like security. Like, I was like the head of security. Nobody knew where she lived but me. Most of the meetings just took place in Rafa's house, in uh, Max's house. I met Max the first time at his home, matter of fact. I went there with Griselda. From that point on, I never liked him. I used to tell Griselda, I said, don't trust this motherfucker, I don't trust him. I said, listen, if you don't stay away from this guy, he's gonna put you in prison. Next time I run to this guy, I'm gonna shoot him. He will run and tell Rafa, and they will come back and make sure nothing happens to Max, you know, take care of Max, he's my composite. I said, fuck Max. I shoot that motherfucker. He says, you gonna kill me? I said, not right now, but I will later. I mean, you had to respect him because the guy he came in with like tough talk, guns, and all these people with him. You're talking about a guy, anybody coming in anywhere with an entourage, you go, this guy is somebody. I didn't go around flashing and stuff like that. You know, I had my house in Miami, in Palm Beach. I had a house in San Agustin, two houses in Chicago. My cars, I had plenty of cars. I'd buy them for my girlfriend's too. My wife, a couple girlfriends. Yeah. The life, you gotta have, you gotta keep a, a couple. You know, it was what I wanted, what I like, I saw on the street, I bought it. You know, I didn't have to worry about the price. I don't know, show business, kind of, that type of thing. A handsome guy, he spoke English, had a lot of charisma. That's one of the reasons that she liked me so much, because I grew up in this country. I just didn't come across the water and it started and put me on the street. Although he was as bad and probably killed more than, than any of the other ones. I came from a good family, but I grew up on the streets in Chicago. I was a bad boy from the very beginning. A stone cold killer. To tell you the truth, I didn't like the guy very much because he used to brag to me about like people that he had killed and that sort of thing. I thought I rolled my window down and I shot him with a Mac 11 on the face. I don't want to hear, oh, we killed this guy here, there. It was like. And I kill anyone in the United States, only one in Europe. Anywhere they send me, I'll do it. I don't want to hear about it, bragging about stuff. As far as working in US soil, I was the best. It was unnerving in, in a way, you know, because he was an enforcer for this woman or whatever, you know, whatever he was. And he was the guy during the years 82 to 84 that she used to basically exclusively to uh, do her killings. Reputation was that once I went after you, I will get you. If you run, I'm gonna catch you. If there was a drug debt to be collected, he was sent to collect it. A lot of her customers, Sometimes they were late. And she said, well, if you're not here tomorrow, I'll send Ruby after you. Oh, no, no, don't send him. Alfredo Lorenzo was a drug customer of Griselda Blanco. And Griselda ordered me to deliver five kilos of cocaine to them. And back then, it was a $50,000. It was $250,000. Had been given cocaine on consignment. That was the way Griselda did it. She says, how many days do you need to pay me back? Oh, a week. Okay, I'm going to give you two weeks. When those two weeks were up, she didn't want the money. She wanted the person's life. Really was sent to collect the debt. I went to his house, you know, to pick up the money. 
Oh, I go, excuse, excuse, excuse. He says, oh, tell her that to give me more credit and I'll, I'll come up with the money. I didn't say nothing to him. I just feel sorry for him. Rivik realized that Lorenzo was giving him a line of bullshit, basically. And when he reported that back to Griselda. She says, well, you know what to do. Well, then his fate was sealed. With Griselda, you didn't pay, you die. Even the mafia would have some kind of code of honor. The Italians would think and try to figure out how am I going to get my money back. And maybe after I got my money, they would beat him to a pulp, but he was fine three weeks later at heel. As the Colombians came in, there was no beating people up. You know, the hot-blooded Latins. and hot, They don't think first. They act first, and then they think afterwards. Even though they might kill the whole family, then they think to themselves, oh my God, I screwed myself out of my money. How am I going to get my money when it's too late to actually get the money? It's not about the money. It's just to prove a point. Don't break me off. Don't fuck with me. Because I kill you, or I send somebody after you. She said, you know, kill him. And then they did. Miguel got on my right and Oscar Murillo, Nyato. He got on the left and I knock on the door. Oscar opened the door. As soon as he opened the door, Miguel put a gun in his ribs. I said to him to be quiet. I asked him what was his wife at. She said he's in the kitchen cooking. So I went and got her and she says, oh, I know what, what's going to go on. The only thing I'm asking for is don't hurt my kids. Three children, two daughters, one son. The daughter's ages, I believe, are six and four, and I think the son was like a baby. I said, no, I'm not going to hurt your kids, you know. Griselda. When she gave me the orders to kill them, I figured I was just going to do him. When I was talking to her, I heard two shots, a couple of times. I knew what was done. Miguel had shot Alfredo. So I told Oscar, I said, watch her, I'll be right back. I went to the next room. I talked to Miguel. I said, done. He says, done. While we were talking, I heard the scream. And then I hear a machine gun go off. Throw him back to the room. That's what happened. He said, he, she tried to jump him. So Oscar fired, and she's been shot about 10, 15 times in the chest when she was still alive. But she's making these weird noses, moaning, blood's going out of her mouth, you know. She's dying. So I grabbed Miguel's gun. I was a 380 with silence, and I shot it twice behind the head. Put there out of her misery. I thought, well, let's get, you know, let's get out of here. But Miguel tells me, no, Cristiano told me to kill everybody in the house. That's what we're talking about. Some of the kids left. He says, no, I'm gonna kill the kids. I said, no, you're not. He's telling me, she told me that she will pay me extra for them, so I'm gonna make the money. I said, no, you're not gonna kill no kids. Well, he's walking towards the kids where they're at. So I put my gun out, and I told him to leave the goddamn house. So Miguel got real mad. You gotta get the little girls. I said, no, no. This is it. It's time to go. Get out of here. So I had to get them out of there at gunpoint. Alfredo and Griselda Lorenzo were found shot and killed in June of 1982 in their home. It was a modest home in the road section of Miami. Back in 1982, I had just recently gone to the Sentax Squad. Received a call from Nelson Andrew, who was a, a homicide detective with the city of Miami. Bodies were in separate rooms of the house, and whoever committed the homicide left the children right inside the house.